Hi students! While we're doing some career exploration, I want to make sure that you understand just how important it is to do a little bit of research into that career that you hope to pursue one day to find out what the requirements are specific for that job. Some jobs may require that you have a high school diploma and a specific credential or certificate. And actually a lot of those you can earn while you're in high school. Other jobs might require that you have a bachelor's degree. That typically means four years of college after high school. Some might require a master's or even a doctorate. But it's really important that you go ahead and find out what those requirements are now. So this week I have a video and this video is my niece and she's going to tell us what it's like to be a full-time law student. So let's listen up and see what she has to say. Hi McDowell County students, my name is Megan Noble. I'm a second year law student in Knoxville, Tennessee and I currently attend um, Lincoln Memorial University's Duncan School of Law. So the reason I decided to go to law school is because I love learning and I just really wanted a solid career. I um, majored in political science at the University of Tennessee and when I graduated I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I took three years off. I worked at Chick-fil-A which I had done since I was 16. Um, highly encourage you to take some time off if you're undecided by the way. So what you need to do in order to get into law school is to obviously take the LSAT, which is the law school admissions test. Um, and then, honestly, from there, I would just take a few days, look at all the requirements on the LSAC's website. You have to create a profile. Um, you have to go through the trouble of getting your original transcripts from your undergraduate institution. You have to write a personal statement, make sure you have an up-to-date resume. Um, so my best advice for that is just take a few days to focus solely on getting that all together um, and then just submit your application. One thing that I should mention is I actually, before I took the LSAT, I took a Kaplan course to help prepare for the LSAT. Um, so it just gave me a little bit of structure and actually made me devote time to studying for it because um, my personality type is such that I procrastinate until the last minute and I just felt like that that was something that was very valuable for me. Um, those courses are kind of expensive, um, but there are so many free resources available, so don't feel like that you have to take anything like that. So once you have taken the LSAT and you've had your scores sent and you put the application together and you've sent it off and you've submitted everything, the hard part is done. Um, you're just waiting for your um, acceptance letters at that point. So um, one thing I should mention is that LMU actually had um, their financial aid application was the same as your regular application. So definitely look into that, see if there's anything else that you need to submit to be eligible for scholarships from the school. Um, luckily that was all taken care of in one, one swoop for mine. Um, and um, even if you don't get scholarships, you can use student loans to help pay um, for law school. I will say um, scholarships have been increasingly helpful for me. I did so well in my first year that I actually um, applied and was accepted to receive more scholarship um, my second year. So now I actually have 85% of my tuition is paid for with scholarship. And then I pay for my living expenses and all of that with um, student loans. And if you have undergraduate student loans, which I did, um, I actually paid on those for three years in between undergrad graduation and law school. But um, all those payments will go and all your loans will go in deferment. Um, so you don't owe anything on those while you're in law school. They do say that if you can help or if you can pay the interest payments, that that is always helpful so the interest doesn't compound and make you pay more in the end but the most important thing is to treat law school like a full-time job because it is. So once you are done with law school, um, like I said, I'm in my second year. It's three years total um, if you're full-time. So I have one more year after this year. Once you are done with law school, you take the bar exam. It's offered twice a year um, in February if you were to graduate for some reason in December um, or in July if you graduate in um, May. Sorry and then you just spend that summer preparing for the bar exam. It's a very, very tough exam. Um, my school actually included in tuition is bar prep courses. So your third year you're doing bar prep courses and then that whole summer before July you're taking the bar exam and then um, you get the results back in October if you take the July bar exam and hopefully that you've passed it and you could be admitted to the practice of law. 
thank you for listening. Um, I know everyone's journey will be a little bit different and there's probably a lot more questions that you may have. Um, I am willing to answer any questions that you may have about law school or um, if you're interested in law school, maybe I can recommend a few books to you. Um, you can reach out to Mindy, obviously, and she can give you my information. Um, like I said, happy to help in any way possible. Um, other than that, if you're not interested in law school, I hope that you find something that fulfills you and something that makes you happy and good luck on your journeys.